enemies never seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. Mega line. We started off with the sniper rifle Centurion, then we went to a pistol, then another pistol with then a pump action pistol, but the point I'm trying to make is we never got a shotgun. Like, you could argue the Roto Fury is kind of a shotgun, except for it only fires one dart at once, so it doesn't really count. And yet, with the second release of Blasters, basically the third and fourth Blasters release in the Rival line, we get the Atlas, which is a pump-action, double-ball-shooting, magazine-fed awesomeness. Well, so we hope. And yet, there's still no Mega Shotgun. What the heck, nerf? But yes, the Rival Atlas. Yeah, it's a shotgun. It is massive. I should probably get that right out of the way right now. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. It is primary big. You might want to try to run this as a secondary because it's a shotgun and shotguns are typically pretty good for that. But with its single sling point right here and then it being this big, I, it's pretty freaking big. It's huge, trust me. It's kind of in this weird spot. It's awesome we have a shotgun. It's a magazine-fed shotgun. It fires two balls at once. And yet, I don't know how I feel about this thing. This review is a little bit different than normal because I've already unboxed the blaster because I just couldn't contain my excitement, unfortunately. And when I first got it out of the box, I just didn't like it. The first thing I noticed was when I put my hand on the grip, there wasn't that comfortable to me. There's this spike right here that just kind of rides into both my fingers right there, yet it's not really comfortable near the bottom of the grip either, and the worst part is it's like made of really cheap plastic. It kind of flexes in my hand a little bit, and I was immediately turned off by that, but whatever, it's a shotgun. It comes with a 12-round rival magazine and 24 balls, which is really, really nice of them to give you 24 HIRs, even though they only give you a single 12 round magazine. Really, really nice of them because if you had any of the other rifle blasters, you would know you lost those balls immediately. Balls went everywhere and you could never find them. Thankfully, they gave you some extras, which was incredibly nice of them once again. And it is magazine fed. And then of course you get the blaster itself in all of its pump action glory. However, I know a lot of people are going to have some problems with the pump action because, of course, how does this thing feed two balls per pump into the plunger and the barrel and everything that makes it fire? It doesn't really seem all that possible. When I pull this back, you'll understand immediately. Ew. Yeah, so maybe that won't be a deal breaker for a lot of you, but for some of you, maybe you remember the Ravonix 360. That thing did a lot of stuff when you primed it back. You fed the discs in vertically, and when you primed it, not only did it have to move that disc from the rotating drum into the firing chamber, but it did that making it go from vertical to horizontal, it rotated the chamber, and it also primed back the blaster at the same time. And it felt like garbage, and it was really ew. This is doing something about as crazy. Thankfully, there's a big, huge jam door clear thing right here. Not that I've ever understood how you would exactly clear a jam out of this, and you might understand that more if I show you how it works. But as we can see in here, and it's going to be kind of difficult, but bear with me. You'll see down at the bottom, there is this like kind of like clear tube. And when I prime this back, that clear tube is going to move up, as you can kind of see right there. And then when it gets to the very top, two balls feed into it. So now when I prime it forward, it's going to move that thing down. And then uh, the barrel is going to close, like push them back in against the thing. And, seal it closed and obviously now I pull the trigger and fired it. You can do all of that with the jam clear door open. Cool, right? Well, maybe. See, I, how the hell are you ever supposed to clear a jam out of this? Like, unless a ball like falls on top of it, that's the only way I see of clearing a jam out of this thing. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. That's, I've had it happen, trust me. I, how many times I have fed in this magazine and had it just launch all the balls everywhere. It's happened quite a few times with this blaster. 
but I've tried to give it some time. I've, I was kind of disappointed with it. I kept working with it. I really wanted to like this thing. And even when I'm sitting down to the video, there's only one thing that I absolutely think is amazing that puts it above any other blaster I've pretty much ever used. And that's this sight. Look at that sucker. That is amazing. Yeah, there's only the front post. It's a shotgun, who cares? That is incredible and it flips. So if you don't want it there, you don't have to have it, but it just, it's a beautiful like ghost ring sight. It works so well, it's so awesome. Even though it's like way above where the balls are even coming out of the blaster. So you can't really even aim with it unless you just wait for somebody to be in the circle and pull the trigger. It works, it's cool, but that's not the only thing that really struck me out about this blaster. And it didn't help the first time when I fired this thing that it kind of fired like poop. I mean, I expected it to be a little underperforming, but I wasn't expecting it to be that underperforming. So I still gave it some time. Slept on it for about two days now. Finally, went outside, ran about 10 magazines worth through it. 1,200, 120 balls. And originally it was pretty disappointing. I, again, I couldn't get over the fact that it seemed to hit about half as far as my modded Snapfire pistol shooting a regular Elite Dart. A little disappointing to be sure, but when I used it a little bit more and I started to get more into it, I really started to get into it. It's big, it is a primary, and running a shotgun as a primary is a little difficult. But the way the balls exit the barrel and the way they kind of spiral out, they make a really nice pattern. And while it's not a very long range pattern, because not only does this thing not have that great a velocity, but on top of that, a problem persists where the HIRs that the rival's blasters use, well, they have a lot of surface area. They have dimples on them, but they have a lot of surface area, so they seem to slow down really quickly in the air, a lot quicker than darts. So even if you have some insane velocities out of this thing, they quickly lose it a lot faster than darts and a hell of a lot faster than Boomco darts. But regardless, using this thing for a while, or they weren't going that far, you could angle it and get some better shots, and that actually seemed to work really good for me. If you angle it, you're basically just raining down balls on your opponent. Yes, literally, you are teabagging your opponents at range with balls from the sky. That's hilarious, I don't care who you are. I couldn't get over that, and so I kept using it, kept running magazines through it, trying to get used to this reloading system, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but I started to really dig it. And the fact of the matter still is, if I was running this in an indoor arena like Dart Wars or a converted laser tag arena or something like that, Bar none I would use this. There's basically no other reason not to use it. You fire out two HIRs per trigger pull. You can reload it that fast and that makes you feel insanely good when you prime it that quickly. Sometimes you have an issue where it will only load one if you prime it that fast, but eh, whatever. But the fact of the matter is basically anybody within 40 or 50 feet of you, you point this at them, they're gonna get tagged out and they're not gonna be able to dodge it because at that range, the HIRs are moving at their absolute highest velocity and they move in a very unpredictable twin spread. It's amazing. It's a very, very good blast for that. But if you're using this thing outside like I did in my range testing, nah, -uh, man, I would take a dart over that any day of the week. And that's probably a, an issue with the rival blasters in a hole. They're just not good outside blasters and that's where most people nerf unless they're nerfing around the house. I know pretty much every nerf battle that isn't one at like Dart Wars or inside a house is taking place in a park or something like that. If you're out at a park or somebody's backyard, a lot of videos out there have to do with outside nerf wars and that's where the rival blasters kind of lose their edge. Not only do they not deal well with air resistance as a whole anyway, but then you put wind resistance on top of that, like the wind is blowing, it just doesn't work with these poor things. And that's kind of where I draw the line with this blaster. It is $40, and I know a lot of people are going to say that is not worth it. And I was kind of on that fence at first. I know for a fact the Rival Chaos is nowhere near the $70 they want for it. There's no way I would ever pay that for that blaster. 
ridiculously huge expensive magazines out of the way. I'm sure that magazine's literally eating up $20 of the entire price tag on that thing, or at least 25. And that's with it bundled with a blaster. So if you're expecting to find rival magazines separately, well, keep in mind that these things are meant to retail for, I think, $13. That's with 18 HIRs and then the one mag. So how do you expect them to sell basically four of these with four times the ammo, or at least two times if you're going for the bare minimum, two and a half or so, it's not gonna happen. It's, it's, you're not gonna find rival magazines for, they're gonna be $30, at least $30. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. $40 for this thing, and people were like, There's, no, it's not worth it, man. You walk on, it's just not worth it. I saw some reviews from some people, some other people had the blaster before me, and I wanted to spend my absolute amount of time with this blaster just to make sure that I wasn't completely wrong about it. And thankfully, I did find a silver lining. Now, for the price of the $40, you do get the blaster itself. I just showed you how complex it has to work in order to fire. That's not cheap, and you are getting a massive amount of plastic. I have paid far more for less plastic. I, you want it like twenty dollars for a long arm? Screw that! This thing, forty dollars. I think you can get away with justifying that, especially when you're getting twenty-four HIRs and a twelve-round magazine. That's not a bad deal at all, and it will probably go down in the future anyway. So, yeah, whatever. Is it worth using over your Zeus or your Apollo? Maybe it does have its purpose, but if you're looking to use it outdoors and you don't have a lot of tight corridors and stuff to use it in. I wouldn't bank on it. It's not really something I can guarantee that you're going to get a lot of use out of compared to your single shot or your just semi-auto. And the full auto, you do you, but I don't believe in that whatsoever. I'm sorry, Rival Chaos. $40 for this thing. It has a very, very annoying reloading mechanism that thankfully Mr. Nathan has told me how to fix. Basically, there's these tabs right here. You can see them sticking out right there that really get in the way when you're trying to load this thing. Like, I can't just, like, push this thing down. I have to kind of get it in there in an angle. And then to remove it, you have to push both of these up. If you only try to push in one side, it says it's ambidextrous. I ain't seeing it. it it's not, like, it works, but you have to put a lot of force on it. Two of them, no problem. Slide it out with one finger. It's got its moments, but it's gonna require some modification. One thing I wanted to try to do when I first got mine was extend the mag release down. That way, if I was able to actuate it with my thumb and just dump out the old magazine and shove another one in there, I'd be well good to go. But now I have to kind of go like this and put a little bit more thought into it. And then of course you have to really get it in at that perfect angle. You're going to want to Dremel out those tabs. That's just the roundabout way of saying you're going to want to do that because it's really, really annoying. If you're expecting me to just say, oh, I'm going to fire it twice at the wall. It's a great blaster. Go get it. Here's my Amazon link in the description. Hint, hint, wink, wink. That's not going to happen. I really had to think about this one because like I said, when I first got it, I absolutely hated it. And that was after me being excited to the moon about it. And Nerm from Novacon just telling me straight up, it's like the best blaster I've ever had. Go buy it, dude. And I did, and I, it took me a while. It's grown on me. I really wish it was just a tad bit smaller. It's just too big to be conceivably a secondary. I'm a big dude, obviously, I'm huge. And I like shotguns, because it's one of the only ways I could get fun exercises, running around and shotgunning all the skinny people and watching them cringe as they try to dodge the darts so they can't because there's too many of them. That makes me very happy. And the best part about that is I don't have to run for very long. I have to get to a destination quickly and I have to kind of tag out as many people as possible and then quickly escape. That works well for a fat kid. What doesn't work for a fat kid is marathon running. Thankfully, I don't have that problem with blasters like this. It's one of the reasons why I love shotguns so much. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. The Rival Atlas is not a bad buy, but it's not gonna be for everyone. That's for sure. It is a shotgun and it's one of the most quintessential shotguns I have seen from a dart blaster. It is magazine fed, it fires two darts at once, which is enough, it's way better than one, that's for sure. But it doesn't have the range and it really kind of lacks the versatility I like to see in a blaster. Some people have done some modifications. If you really wanted to, you can put a pin through that kind of uh, 
plastic in there. Actually, yeah, I, now that I think about it, I don't even know how that works off the top of my head, but I know I've already seen it from Zombona, and I think even Mr. Nathan did it himself. But you can turn this into a single shot, and then it's kind of like an Apollo with a built-in pump action. Not bad, but I still don't think the velocity is up there with the Apollo. I don't have a chronograph yet to test that myself. And at the same point, it's like, why bother? Yeah, you can turn it into a pump action rifle, but just wait for them to make one. They're going to. This is not the only thing they're going to be doing with the pump action in the entire line. I'm sure we'll see a pump action rival retaliator or elite alpha trooper as long as the, the whole line sticks around. I know this is a crazy long roundabout video, but I just wanted to give you my complete thoughts. I know there wasn't an unboxing, like that's such a big freaking deal. I mean, if you really like the unboxings, go ahead and leave them in the comment boxes below, but really, it, it, it's not worth wasting your time when I had this much to talk about this blaster. This is one of those where I, th I, I really, I'm gonna watch some other reviews carefully because I couldn't have been the first one where out of the box this thing was like, what the heck did I just buy for 40? Like, you, you, this thing, like, look at that. For the whole trigger thing, they had to, they had to cut it out right there. So you thing, and even then it still rubs against, it's horrible. Oh, man. Yeah. Like, everything about those blasters, like, this thing's, like, really freaking creaking and, Oh, the worst part. Oh, yeah, there's a spider. There's a spider in... Eh, you know, like, climb, climb somewhere back in here. There's a black spider living in my blaster. I don't even think we have that spider native anywhere in Washington. Eh, there it is. Eh, don't know. Don't know why it's in my blaster. Whatever. But my main point is, look, I've had this thing for, like, I don't know, two or three days. And, like, the pump plastic is already wearing off. Dude, that spider bro is gonna be living in there for the rest of my life. This thing isn't going back inside, that's for sure. You get it. It's it's a hard recommendation, but overusing it for a while, it grew on me a lot more. And I think that I, I think those of you that watch this channel should be paying attention to that very closely because you probably expected me to foam at the mouth about how awesome this was, and it took me a while to really get into it. And even then, I'm still saying it's kind of a hard recommendation. It's for that specific person, that person who wants to use a shotgun as a primary, because trust me, this thing's not gonna look cool when it's, you know, at almost as long as half your leg, hanging off your belt or hanging off a single point, it's gonna smack you, it's gonna hurt. It just doesn't really work well as a, pri as a secondary, and as a primary, it's very specialized. You're gonna get a lot more out of even probably the chaos at this point, except for that stupidly lengthy reload. So for those of you considering buying the Atlas, if you're worried about the price tag, I can tell you it's probably worth that, but it's only for the right people. I really hope you enjoyed this review. I really hope I taught you something about this. And if you have any more questions about the Atlas, go ahead and drop them in the comment box below. And of course, if I'm just flat out wrong, you can also leave those comments down in the boxes below. I thought about this really, really hard though, and I'm hoping I kind of hit the nail on the head with this one. If you want to see some more reviews of blasters I've looked at recently, go ahead and hit either of these videos right here if you want to see some more reviews in the future. And of course, modding videos as projects come out, there's a subscribe button right there for you. It makes it really easy. All you have to do is sit there and wait until they're up there, and then when they're up there, you get a notification. <sighs> I'm Walcom S7, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in an entirely different one.